Hey copycat quilters, it's Ginger and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing episode two of my panel palooza and I'm using a panel that's different than the ones I've done previously. The reason is if you see a tutorial or a pattern that is for one size uh, panel and one shape of panel, it may not work for the panels that you have because they're all different, of course. So this one's going to be a little different and I'm going to figure out how I can incorporate some patchwork into it to make it bigger than it is now and to make a really beautiful quilt. So stick around and see what I come up with. This is the panel I've decided to do next. It's by Riley Blake and it's called Into the Forest. And I thought this was really sweet for a baby quilt. I have a boy to make for this time. And I thought these were pretty colors for a boy quilt. And you know, for, especially for someone that likes like being outdoors or outdoorsy type family. One thing I found with this panel though, is it's not, it appears it's not really meant to be cut apart. There's not the white space between them. And these things get very close to where um, if you cut it apart, you're going to hit a, the one quarter inch seam allowance is going to hit some of these designs. But I really didn't want to use it this way. I wanted to be able to break it up some. So I'm going to go ahead and cut on those lines. And the other thing then is it makes this a really odd sized uh, square. If I cut on those lines and take a quarter of an inch off, I'm at like 17 and a half inches, which is not any cube that I could make or not a common measurement for blocks. I learned a really good tip from Jenny Doan on a video she had about panels where she says, don't try to fit your block to your panel. Make your panel up into a size or down into a size that works easily with blocks that you have. So I typically like to go to four inch blocks, four inch finished. So I'm going to cut these on the lines and I'm going to add, uh, these were 17 finished. So I think I'm going to add one and a half inch strips around the entire square. And then I'm going to put some things in between to make it even bigger and to add something to it. I just didn't think it would be a really sweet quilt or um, the best use of it to leave it just one big panel like this. So this is EQ8 and I use it sometimes to do my layouts and to put blocks together. But honestly, I don't know a lot of the special features of this. I use it in a very basic way for myself. I know I want my blocks to be four inch finish blocks and I know I'm going to take that 17 and a half ish 18 inch panel and make it 20 inches. So if these are four inch blocks, that's one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. This square is going to be where my panel block is. And so I did four of those. So the green sections are 20 inch squares. So it's five four inch squares across, five four inch squares down. And I left a row of four inch blocks between them. And each of these then is a flying goose unit or flying geese unit. And I counted how many of those I would need to surround my panels with flying geese. And then I did those bear paws in the middle. So you can see the way that EQ8 works is I could drop these anywhere and put them into my quilt and then I could rotate them to make them into that bear paw setting. So I placed the bear paws around the center and then I did the square and a square block to put in the exact middle. And the bear paws wouldn't exactly work because they're meant to like touch each other and this isn't going around. So I just kind of did them in a swirl. So being able to lay those blocks out the way that I did and count and place the flying geese around it, I decided I really liked this layout. I thought this was pretty. Um, it's pretty easy to make because I just, I think I counted, I had to make 128 flying geese units. Um, and then two of those make one four inch square. But it let me look at kind of the proportions of how big my squares are going to be versus how big those uh, flying geese are going to be. Now, if you don't have EQ8, and I understand everybody doesn't, but it is a lot of fun to do things like this. And this is this part that I've done here is not that hard to learn. I'll put a link in the comments below to a tutorial about EQ8 so that you can just see kind of the capabilities. But if you don't have EQ8, you could draw out on graph paper a five by five grid, you know, lay them out with splits in between and figure out what size your grids need to be, what size your blocks need to be, 
and then play around with drawing in colored pencils. You can do that, and I've done that for a very long time myself, but now that I have EQ8, I really enjoy doing this and just seeing how it's going to turn out. Ta-da! This is the final quilt. I think it looks so cool with the flying geese all around, giving it a lot of movement, and even the bear paws spinning in the middle. Even adding those black borders around the panels seemed like it was framing it, more than just getting the panel up to a size where I could use some common block sizes. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. So that's quilt number two made from panels in my Panel Palooza series. I love it, but I say that pretty much about every quilt as soon as I finish it. This one I still have to quilt and bind, but I couldn't wait to show you, and I want to spend a little time thinking about how I'm going to quilt it. I may show it later in an episode once it's finished out. I wanted to show you a couple of things I really enjoyed about it. Um, I did a little fussy cutting there in the center block to make the little animals um, upright and kind of centered, you know, to make something cute there in the middle. So I did do these bear paw blocks around the center. I thought it was kind of cute and something different um, instead of just the flying geese. And it's kind of a little bit of a quilter's secret Easter egg in this quilt that it has bears on it and bear paw blocks. And it has flying geese, which are related to winter time and bears and wild animals. So there's some little secret things in there hidden in there for quilters that maybe the mom and grandma won't know because they're not. One challenge I had on this quilt if you look, this is a directional fabric, and I really did not realize that when I bought the fabric. So some of my animals' heads are going left to right, some are going upside down. The way that the cuts are on those flying geese, I really couldn't do them directional, and I wouldn't have taken the time to do it anyway. They're kind of small little sections, and I just don't think it made that much difference. If I had noticed when I bought that fat quarter bundle that it was directional, I may not have bought it. And whenever I pulled it out for this quilt and I saw it was directional, I thought to myself, you know, I'm probably never going to take the time to make a quilt that has all those directions the right way and it coordinates with this panel, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it. And, you know, even looking at it, I really think even if you're a quilter and you looked at it carefully, you may not even notice that it's directional. And if you do, please don't tell me you noticed it. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been fun. This is quilt number two in a matter of two or three weeks. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. This was fun to make, and on my next one I think I'm going to do maybe a little bit more, more mature looking quilt because I really enjoyed the baby things, but I do have some panels that could maybe be for older kids or teenagers or even some that might be okay for adults. So I'm going to go back and look through that big pile and find out what the next quilt will be. And don't forget, August 5th, if you're watching this in 2023, I'm going to do a live with my collaborator and we're going to do a little challenge to see how each of us makes up our own panels. So there will be a short about a reminder on that, but if you subscribe and follow and notify and like, you'll get notified whenever that comes out. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you again soon for the next Panel Palooza Quilt.